The British exodus, rising anti-Semitism, a predominant Corbyn scare and a general sense of insecurity. Is UK jury facing crisis mode? A week doesn't go by where somebody doesn't hoot some anti-Semitic uh, taunt at me. This didn't happen years ago. I'd like her to grow up not being known as a Jew. If Jeremy Corbyn were to get in, I think then you will see a radical movement of Jewish people to Israel. The threat of one party taking over, as is likely to happen in government, means that you know 40 percent of an ethnic minority feel they may not actually be able to to stay in the country. It's it's astonishing that we've reached this stage. These are not just sentiments. During 2018, there were no less than 1,652 recorded anti-Semitic incidents in Britain, a 16 percent increase from the year before, and the highest number of anti-Semitic incidents recorded in a single year in the kingdom since 1984. This, however, is only the very beginning, many believe, if Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn will take over the Prime Minister's seat. The Labour Party was always the most fiercely anti-racist party in the UK. If you had a problem with racism, if you had a problem with anti-Semitism, the first party you're going to ask for help is the Labour Party. Even to the most obsessive political observer, Jeremy Corbyn was an entirely obscure backbencher on the Labour, in the Labour Party whose views carried no weight whatsoever. So the fact that he was off meeting Hamas meeting Hezbollah, meeting Raid Salah, meeting all kinds of people, was irrelevant. Nobody cared. All I know is about my Labour Party is that the Labour Party left me. I didn't leave the Labour Party. The Labour Party left me, and it's left me where I was in the middle. The reason that Labour found it so difficult to adopt the definition of anti-Semitism is because they didn't want to. Because, actually, the leadership of the Labour Party I have to say, and it's not a word one or an accusation one should throw lightly, is fundamentally anti-Semitic. And these grim prospects are encouraging many British Jews to consider a dramatic change. The Jewish population here in Britain is very comfortable. Uh, they're very British and they're very proud of being British. Um, and that's a difficult decision to make, to move to Israel. You can be as aligned and as, as loving towards Israel, but at the same time very British. Jeremy Corbyn come in, I think that may well open the gates to uh, physical manifestations of underlying anti-Semitism. In Israel, there's definitely a place for us to go, feel safe, and find a feel safe to practice our kind of religious values and things like that. I heard the statement, if Corbyn gets elected, we're moving straight away. I've heard it so many times. If once upon a time, Making Aliyah was a far-fetched dream. Today, it's turning into the reality of today and tomorrow. As the public discourse from left to right is getting more and more extreme, many believe it also exposes the real nature of modern anti-Semitism. I think the lesson, the biggest lesson of all, of the whole Corbyn fiasco is that uh, this idea that it's that anti-Semitism is just sort of you know uh, skinheads and, and Nazi types. They stray between the far right and the far left seamlessly. One minute they're talking about how Jews invented the Holocaust, and the next minute they're talking about how Jews are evil elitist capitalists trying to exploit the working classes. The moment you strip that away, it takes two seconds for that whole uh, mask to unravel, and then actually what you see coming out is the most appalling anti-Semitic poison. But British Jews have no intention of giving up without a fight, a battle they believe is crucial for the fate of world Jewry as a whole. Why don't you Jews ever ask yourselves, what is it that you do that makes people hate you? Why is it you've been expelled from country after country? Why did the Nazis feel the need to exterminate you? And we can't answer that question because the fact is, we didn't do anything. Israel has a right to exist. What the government is, what it isn't, what it's doing is irrelevant to that debate. Nobody says because Trump is the president of America that America should cease to exist. We cannot afford to lose this fight in Britain. We can't afford to pack our bags and go somewhere else. We have to fight, we have to win the argument here because we're right. And if we fail to win this argument, Britain will not be the last domino to fall. Ellie Hochenberg, I24 News.